Buddhist Sermon. Buddhist Sermon is delivered by Venerable Baragama Piratana Thera. Namo Buddhaya. Homage to the fully enlightened Buddha. Dear friends in Dhamma, today I would like to discuss with you the value of and the importance of faith in Buddhism. Actually, what is faith? Faith is called in Pali, Sadha. Faith is the acceptance of truth of an idea that cannot be known at present or it cannot be known by other means in some of theistic religions. Faith is sometimes based on blind belief without reasoning, without based on facts. In those religions, faith has metaphysical effect based on faith towards God. You can, you are saved no matter what you do or say right or wrong. It is irrelevant because you have faith in God. You are rewarded. Buddha teaches faith at very different way. Faith is much appreciated by Buddha if faith is encouraged, openness, and willingness to listen to the teachings of the Buddha. Personally, you are not biased. You do not judge prior to learn the enlightened one's teaching. When you listen to the teachings of the Buddha, you must continue to have that faith in Buddha. Then you can start to practice Dhamma and you can reap the results of your faith. It is like hypothesis in science. Assume you assume something temporarily until it is proven to be truthful. According to the teachings of the Buddha, basic sadha means you can have basic assumption that firstly Buddha is fully enlightened. He has eliminated all the defilements. His teachings, Dhamma, Four Noble Truth, Noble Eightfold Path is only path to liberation. There were fully enlightened followers, Arahant in the past, and the path is open to everyone to become fully enlightened followers, Arahant. If we follow that path, we too can achieve what the Buddha achieved. There were a noble community of Mahasanga Arahant who achieved the path. Still, there are a community of Mahasanga who are achieving the emancipation. In one discourse, Buddha said that faith is the seed of a spiritual path. Without it, you cannot grow spiritually. Normally, people easily become faithful, outward appearance of the religious leader. In India, Pai ascetics were pleased by seeing Buddha aspirants, self-mortification practice. But when Buddha aspirant gave up self, Bodhisattva gave up self-mortification, they also left the Bodhisattva because they were disciples with giving up self-mortification. Another bhikkhu called Vakkali was fascinated by the Buddha's physical, beautiful features. He used to gaze at the Buddha's beautiful, serene body every day secretly. Buddha told him, What is the purpose of looking at this foul, dirty, stinking body? This will change into all age, decay and death. If one can see Dhamma, he can see Buddha. In Alavaka Sutta, once Buddha went to meet a cannibal who lived in a cave. He was displeased with the Buddha because Buddha entered his cave without his permission. He harassed the Buddha, asking Buddha to go out and come there three times. Buddha very humbly did it what he asked to do. He said that he will ask few questions. If Buddha failed to answer, he will chase away Buddha from the cave, hurt or kill. Buddha said, I will answer, but you cannot chase me away or kill. You do not possess such power. Buddha permit him to ask whatever he wants to ask. Alok asked, what is best wealth for a man in this world? Buddha replied, faith is the best wealth for man in the world. How does faith become a wealth? When you have faith, it will enrich your life. 
spiritually both in this life and in the samsaric journey, the cycle of existence. Alok asks, how does one cross the currents of desire? How to cross the strong currents of samsara? Buddha replied, one can cross the current of samsara with faith. We are carried with strong currents of desire, hatred and delusion in the samsara. In order to get rid of these strong currents, we must develop sadha. No faith. You cannot cross the strong current. By diligence is the ocean of samsara is crossed. Mindful and discerning one, one who is have capacity to understand, who in the Dhamma plead his faith. He who has faith and he is also truthful, virtuous, firm and fond of giving by virtue of these poor conditions will never in the after grieve. Buddhist philosopher once said, one associates with Dhamma out of faith but knows out of understanding is the chief of the two, both faith compassed. But the faith compassed, as we develop our practice of Dhamma, Faith is start to be replaced by knowledge based on personal experience. Buddha explained that there are two types of faith or sadha. One is called baseless faith, amulika sadha. Second is called recent faith, faith based on facts. This is called akharavati sadha. If one believes something based on emotions, he or she is influenced by miracles, having believed based on surface of his story, without going deep into the matter, without examining other alternative methods to find out the truth. Most of average people just come to believe blindly. This type of sadha is called amulika sadha, baseless faith. Recent faith, akharavati sadha, grows after careful investigation, careful assessment of possibilities, Inferences after careful consideration of facts. I recently saw a documentary in BBC. Certain group of particular religion does some healing on the stage. People walk up to the stage with much difficulty, either crippled or crooked. They pretend to be either lame or crippled. But when they come to pray and they get healed instantly, but it was later found, it was a pre-arranged drama, it was acting. People deceived, people were deceived. Many people were converted on their religion because of this type of miracle. The poor and innocent, naive people are being cheated by cunning persons who are expert in such things. These cunning people make their living by cheating innocent people, by getting more followers for their religion. If they are really capable of healing, I think they must go to the hospitals where there are uh, many deaf, blind, crippled, lame children, elders who need miracles, who need get cured, who need miracles more than anyone else. It is good to... It is good to... Use Paul's, not to use Paul's miracles to propagate one religion. That is, itself is immoral. How can that religion teach morals to the followers? Buddha taught teaching is the best miracle rather than attracting followers by magic and miracles. During the time of the Buddha, there was a Jain religious follower, a wealthy, respected person called Upali who came to argue with Buddha on a certain point. After long discussion with Buddha, he wish was, he, his view was clarified. He wanted to become a Buddha's follower. He said, I want to become Buddha's disciple from this day onward as long as life lasts. Rather than allowing him to become Buddha's disciple based on Buddha, Buddha's faith, Buddha asked him to take him to consider carefully making such important decision. Buddha said to him, Make careful investigation, Upali. It is appropriate for well-known people like yourself to make a careful investigation person. At this time in India, there were considerable competition between various religions and the religious sects to get disciples. 
Upali was surprised Buddha's unexpected advice. Upali said to Buddha, I am even more pleased by what you say. If another religion sect or, or religion had secured me as a disciple, they would have been paraded banner through the town to let everyone know. But Lord Buddha asked me a proper investigation first. Knowing that Upali had been a Jain, Buddha then asked him to continue to support his former religion. For a long time, your family has given alms to Jains. Continue giving them alms when they come. This also shows that how tolerant Buddha with the other religion. In Majjhimanikaya Kita Agri Sutta, it is very well explained. Buddha says, Bhikkhu, I don't say that final knowledge is achieved all at once. On the contrary, final knowledge is achieved by gradual training, gradual practice, by gradual progress. Now, there are, they are come to be a gradual training, gradual practice, gradual progress. Here, one who has faith in teacher visits him. When he visits him, he pays respect to him. When he pays respect to him, he gives ear. One who gives ear hears the Dhamma. Having heard Dhamma, he memorizes it. He examines their meaning. He gains the reflection and acceptance of those teachings. Intensive energy springs up in him to practice Dhamma. When a strong energy to practice Dhamma springs up, he applies. This will having applied his will, he meditates. Then he meditates, he strides diligently, resolutely. He realizes the ultimate truth and sees it by penetrating it with wisdom. Let us take this scenario. If there has not been that faith, then one will not visit to listen to the teachings, giving ear to the teaching. When there has not been giving ear to the Dhamma, there has not been hearing of them. And then there has not been memorizing of the Dhamma, then there has not been reflective acceptance of the teaching. When there is acceptance of reflective acceptance of the teaching, then one can to develop strong energy to practice them. There is an opportunity to penetrate wisdom. People are more concerned with developing physical body and muscles. But Buddha speaks of spiritual muscles, spiritual faculties, spiritual capabilities that can be developed. What are these faculties? They are faith faculty, the energy faculty, the mindfulness faculty, the concentration faculty and wisdom faculty. These mental muscles are too developable. They are too cultivatable. They are too improvable. But unfortunately, people are more concerned with developing physical faculties, not spiritual faculties. It is equally very important to develop both mental and spiritual faculties. If you develop your inner faculties, you will win the battle against the defilements. So, dear friends in Dhamma, let us develop our sadha, faith in the Buddha, Dhamma and Sangha. May the Buddha, Dhamma and Sangha guide you, protect you and bless you. May the merits of listening to Dhamma talk, may these merits help you to realize the supreme bliss of Nibbana, the total cessation of suffering, the freedom from all the bondage. May all beings be well and happy. Sabhe satta bhavantu sukitatta. Aka satta chabumatta deva naga mahidika punyan thang anumo ditwa chirang rakantu sasanang. Buddhist sermon was delivered by Venerable Baragama Piratana Thera.